The topic of my talk uh, will be uh, very different. We're going into something uh, way drier than design systems, which is uh, creating config plugins uh, for Expo to unlock native features. And uh, before I get into it, I want to know a bit more about you. Um, how many of you use Expo on a regular basis? Okay, quite a lot. And uh, how many of you uh, use Expo development builds? around the same number of people, okay, interesting. And uh, have you ever created an Expo config plugin before? Okay, quite a few. Cool. Um, so before I dive in, let me quickly introduce myself. Um, so I got into software engineering a bit by accident. Um, I was an economics grad uh, who wanted to start a startup and uh, had all these ideas that I couldn't build, so I taught myself how to code and uh, fell into a rabbit hole that I haven't really come out of. I've um, been doing this for six years now, mainly uh, TypeScript and React. And I rediscovered uh, React Native in late 2022. Uh, why do I say rediscovered? Uh, because uh, I think it was in late 2019 when I've already played with it and I was using Expo back then. And I thought, this is already quite cool, but it doesn't really give me the UX that I would expect from an app. Uh, so I abandoned it, but came back to it later in 2022, and um, I have to say that I was really impressed by how far the ecosystem has gotten, and I think that was mainly driven by Expo and um, the ability to create development builds and pretty much customize any native project to your liking. And um, what I just said, I think, fits this midweek meme pretty well. Uh, so I think many are still, based on what I see on Reddit, uh, in the middle here, and they think, oh, um, you know, when you use Expo, you can't do X or Y. And I think uh, that's just not the case anymore. Uh, you can do anything with Expo and probably in a probably better way because uh, you don't have to uh, apply surgery uh, on native projects and uh, do manual fire changes and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I um, think uh, we should all be on the right. <laughs> And um, how do I get into Expo Config plugins, you might ask yourself. Uh, well, as always in software engineering, it all starts with an idea. So my girlfriend approached me and said, Max, I shop on all these different websites and I'd love to save items that I like into one universal wish list rather than uh, you know, saving links on my notes app or whatever. And I thought that's actually a pretty cool idea and um, got right into it, sat down on a weekend and wanted to build it and create a new op a project with Expo. And I thought, okay, the experience that I want to create here is probably something like Pinterest, right? So you um, are browsing Safari and then you find something nice and you want to pin it to a board. And then you, how it works for Pinterest is you open the share menu and then their logo appears in the share menu. And when you press it, a window opens on top of it and then you can um, save it into a board. Right, and uh, what they use is called an iOS share extension. So uh, it's a pretty convenient way for um, doing something quickly without interrupting your browsing flow, right? And that's exactly what I wanted to do for the app I was building. And uh, what do we normally do in this case? We go to Google and we check, are there any config plugins for this that allow me to do that with Expo? And to my surprise, uh, that wasn't really the case. And uh, this was the first time in my career that I thought, damn, actually probably have to build something open source and uh, create this myself. Um, so I did just that. And um, by the way, it's not completely true. There are some libraries that let you do that, but one isn't compatible with Expo. It's called React Native uh, Share Menu. And the uh, other one didn't fit my bill either because um, it would only redirect me to the main app. It wouldn't let me open a custom view on top of Safari. So I, I thought I had to do this myself. And um, the way to uh, create an Expo config plugin for a share extension is, uh, contains multiple steps. And I want to go through each one, one by one, and show you a little code snippet um, that was involved in each of them. So um, before we dive in, it would be helpful to think about how we would do this with just Xcode, so with the GUI, right? So when you open Xcode um, and you have an app already there, then in the bottom, there's this little plus sign that you press, and then it gives you this huge menu of things you can add as a target to your Xcode project, one of which is a share extension, but could also be an app clip or whatever. And uh, that's what we're doing in the first step. We're basically doing everything that you would do in a GUI programmatically. 
And um, we do this um, by changing a file, which is uh, called a PBX proj file. And it's basically a huge file that describes what's supposed to be shown in the Xcode GUI. So whatever you change there could have also probably been changed in the GUI of Xcode. And um, the way we do this here is we use this uh, helper plugin from Expo called with Xcode project. And this thing um, then takes in uh, the parent configuration. So that's always the thing that you have in your app.json or app.config.js or whatever. And then uh, you will pass it as an argument to it and then it will return a modified config. So it's a very functional way of changing the configuration of your Xcode project or Expo project. And uh, the most interesting part here is um, the mod results um, field because that is an instance of uh, a package called Cordova node Xcode. And this is the thing that lets you change the Xcode project to your liking. You can add targets like share extensions, app clips, whatever you want. And um, this file is uh, in reality much bigger, but these are the seven steps or the seven methods that I had to use. So the first thing that you have to do is you, set up, you have to set up the compiler options for the share extension because that thing itself has to be built as well. You have to add a product file, you have to add it to the native target section, blah, 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 all these things. Uh, this was pretty complex and daunting because this is not a great library and it's not well documented and doesn't use TypeScript pretty well. So uh, I almost gave up here but um, pushed through by also looking at some other examples uh, that were building similar things. Uh, so yeah, in theory this is a really, really powerful tool and um, I hope it will get, a, get better in the future. And uh, the next step is that we have to create a Swift view controller, which is the thing that will display our React Native app in the share extension. So the share extension is kind of its own little React Native app, right? And for this, we have to have some like parent container. In Expo itself, it's uh, I think a C, a C file or something with based on a storyboard. But here, I just wanted to create a simple Swift file, which is a UI view controller. And uh, I will create a React Native bridge here, which will then let me talk to a bundle that is only meant for the share extension. And uh, again, I like only took other parts that were interesting. Uh, the biggest gotcha for me here was to use a shared bridge. Uh, so when I was, uh, I'm not a Swift developer, so uh, ChatGPT and I figured this out together. <laughs> and uh, the problem was that every time you would open the share extension, a new React Native bridge would be created. And that was kind of counterintuitive for me. I thought this would be uh, uh, something that React Native itself kind of does on its own, but turns out you have to take care of this yourself to not blow up your memory because share extensions have a memory limit of 100 megabytes. So um, this was uh, pretty important um, to uh, keep in control. The next thing that we uh, have to do is we have to update our pod file. And here again, we can use uh, a convenience method from Expo, which is called with dangerous mod. It's not as dangerous as it sounds. Uh, what it does is it changes the pod file. And the way they labeled it, uh, the reason why they labeled it as dangerous is because it's a Ruby file, right? And so it's not some like structured thing that you can um, modify pretty well. It's just characters in a file, basically. So you have to be really careful to do it right. Um, but uh, with this uh, method called merge contents, I can pretty much just like say here, right there, if I would press my cursor there, this is where I want to insert something. And then the share extension target uh, template string, again, like short and heavily, is the thing that will then get injected and let me and will allow me to install the pods and um, everything that is required for the new target that we have here. And uh, the next thing that we have to do is create an info p list for the share extension because, as I said, it's kind of its own little app. So it has to have everything that the main app, ha main app has as well. And um, one thing to note here is uh, something that's normally not in the info p list of the main app is this NS extension activation rule key. That's really important because that tells Xcode or iOS where you want this share extension to be triggered on. So for instance, if you're on the, on the Photos app and you want to share a photo, in our case, we wouldn't appear there because um, we didn't specify the activation rule for that. So in this case, uh, we will only get triggered on Safari 
to uh, receive the URL of the website we're on. This is uh, the thing that ends with a uh, web URL with max count. Uh, then we will get triggered uh, for text. So if you select a text and we want to share it, then uh, we will also appear in the share menu. And the last thing, and this is for me the most interesting discovery of this little undertaking of mine, is uh, something that sounds pretty similar to the first one, because it will also get triggered on Safari, but it lets you do something pretty special. It lets you inject a JavaScript file into the web page right before the share extension gets triggered. You can do pretty cool things with that, and I will show you that at the end of the talk. And uh, lastly, what's also important here is that we have to specify the so-called NS extension principle class, which should be the same name as the view controller that we create in our Swift file. Then we uh, create the file, and um, that's kind of it. And the last step is that we have to update the expo config itself. So it turns out if you use EAS for building, you have to um, basically create this really deeply nested um, addition to your config, which says which app extensions you have, what they're called, and what entitlements they have. Because if you're building a share extension, you're most likely using an entitlements file because you're probably going to have an app group to allow you to share data between your main app and your share extension, like an authentication session or something. And if we put it all together, uh, we have one config plugin, which, is a, which contains a chain of small little config plugins. Um, and this together it was then packaged into um, something that I released as an open source project. So again, just to recap, create the Xcode target, Swift view controller, update pod file, info plist, and update expo config. And what we get is this. And um, yeah, first open source project, check it out, play around with it. If you need this, uh, we really appreciate any feedback. And uh, the way to set this up is super simple. You literally just add expo share extension to your plugins array after uh, you install it, of course. You can use uh, these options that I specified here, but you don't have to. It could just be a one-liner if you want. And um, yeah, before um, I sh go into demo time, I quickly want, uh, want to show you something in the readme of the project. Is this legible? Or should I zoom in a bit? So uh, I mentioned earlier that we can use something called a pre-processing file, right? And this is this bit here. And what this is, is literally just a JavaScript file that you point Xcode to. And you have to follow this uh, weird convention. I don't know why, you just have to. Uh, you have to create a class. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. It has to um, implement a run method. And that run method then has access to uh, an object which has a completion function, which you have to call to uh, pass data into the initial props of the component that runs in your share extension. Does that make sense? So whatever your share extension gets triggered, you can run any JavaScript you want on the website and the data that you then collect can be passed into your share extension. So if you think back to what kind of app I wanted to build, that was pretty huge because now I don't have to scrape any data on the back end. I can just pull in the images, the title, the price, whatever I want, all the structured data, and I don't have to talk to any back end. So I thought that was super powerful. And, um, Anything else I want to show you here? Yeah, the setup is pretty simple, as I said, just a one-liner in the uh, plugins array. You have to update your main uh, field in your package JSON if you're using this default uh, thing to node modules expo router path. So it has to be an index.js file, um, and then you have to do this either with expo router or the old school way here. And you have to create an index.share.js file, which is the entry to your share extensions uh, React Native app. And in there, you then have to uh, just um, point it to a component of your liking. And that component will then re uh, receive the initial props of anything that the share extension receives from the context it's triggered in. OK, and uh, so to wrap up, I just wanted to show you what I built with it. Uh, if you're interested, uh, here's the link to the test flight. I'm um, very grateful for any feedback. So it's called Favora. And when you open it, you see a list of uh, things, basically, like on Pinterest, right? You can call it whatever you want and save items to it. 
And uh, if you're, for instance, on Safari and you like this jacket, you can press on the share menu and Favora appears there. A custom React Native view opens and you can uh, click on um, the list that you want to share it into. And uh, lo and behold, it's there and uh, contains everything that we want. The price, the name of the product, the images, and all without a server side request. Um, yeah, that's all. Uh, thanks so much for having me, guys. Really cool for you, of you to organize this and um, looking forward to the next one.